that would um, help boost the economy and um, benefit everyone quite dramatically, what you would do is you'd increase immigration, in my view. That would be a very positive thing for the British economy. So the idea of limiting immigration is not only very backward and reactionary, and actually, as uh, I think Diane Abbott says, you know, in this country, talking about immigration is always about racism. Um, uh, it's not only backward and reactionary, it's, um, it limits growth. I mean, people are doing some obvious things, you know, like if you limit, the way go this government has this stupid thing of immigration cap. The easiest way of immigration cap is filling your own, or filling or getting towards their own stupid target is to limit the number of students coming to this country. Well, economically, I know, economically that's an export <laughs> because you have people come to the country and spend lots of money um, and people, you're limiting their freedom to do so uh, and it actually limits the growth in this country and that exacerbates the crisis of higher education and funding and all the rest of it. So, in my view, immigration is unambiguously a good thing and always in Britain it's a smokescreen. Um, it wasn't Polish plumbers um, caused the crisis. Um, it was um, British bankers uh, and British owners of capital. So, you know, that's, that's why I am on that. Um, it can't work. Now, I was, I was actually quite careful to say, I mean, it can't work in terms of growing the economy. It can work for them. As I said quite specifically, they, they can come up with, there can be a point when they can clobber us so much that they will invest. Um, you know, the old phrase is there's, n there's, there's always a way out of the crisis for capital as long as they can get workers to pay for it. Um, so there is a way, that, that's the way we're going out. Eventually, we carry on this road, eventually, eventually they will get out of crisis. So there is, it can work for them, it won't work for us. We'll be massively worse off by the time they're, by the time they're done. By the same token, is it possible to change this uh, without socialism? In my view, and I am a socialist, um, it's not possible to prevent this recurring without socialism, i.e. this is inherent in the system we have. And the reason I say that is because it's <laughs> kept on recurring ever since we've had the system. You know, someone who uh, reads um, uh, classic economists uh, like Smith, like Ricardo, like Marx, they all of them talk about crisis. And they were writing, you know, a hundred and something years ago because they thought it was already something that happened repeatedly in the system. Is it possible to get out of this crisis without socialism? Yes, it is. It's possible, you know, the, at the minimum, the um, idle um, capital held by British companies is 350 billion. Um, the, sh the shortfall um, in GDP now, compared to where we're in 2008, is 20 billion. <laughs> so you could use a fraction of that to get back to where we were in 2008. You could use a very big chunk of it to get back to where we ought to have been, i.e. without a recession. Um, but to do that requires an enormous change in the relationship between labour and capital. But what does that necessarily lead to a, a thorough transformation of the entire society and socialism? Well, I don't know. It, it might, I don't have a crystal ball. But just like you said, the struggle for, say, universal suffrage is a good thing in itself. It's a good reform. What that leads to, actually, when we had universal suffrage, it didn't actually change the overall outcome of elections very much, but it's a democratic right, we fight for it. So, do I think that this, um, getting that money off the big companies, and there's all sorts of ways you can do it, you can tax them, you can regulate them, you can do all sorts of ways you can do it, you can fight for higher pay as well. Um, there's, there's, you know, there's a thousand different ways of doing this, or skinning this particular rabbit. Um, does, does that in itself lead to socialism? No, but it does lead to a big change in the relationship between labour and capital, and who knows what will eventuate after that. Okay, um, I'll try and be very quick. The only question that was really specific 
heavily familiar with the immigration one. Um, I think this is important to housing because historically housing has been a significant site of racial and other tensions. Uh, do I think immigration is the cause of housing problems in this country? Not at all. Uh, how do I think we deal with the kind of tendency to blame someone of a different, uh, like a migrant having a house when you're not happy with your own housing situation, provide adequate housing for everybody? Take seriously people's concerns, but insist always immigration is not the problem. Um, economic policy, uh, in the short run, targeted Keynesianism, uh, funded by taxing these dormant profits on companies, so building council housing, investing in green technology and so on. Medium run, uh, I don't think we should be afraid to talk about an industrial policy. Every country that has developed in the last well, ever, really, has had heavy state intervention nurturing certain indus industries. We're going to move beyond the point of, that we're at at the moment where we're heavily dependent on consumption fueled by credit and on, f on the financial sector in particular, uh, we're going to need a effective industrial policy. In the long run, I agree with you, revolution. I'm talking of ways of, like, crisis amelioration. But I also agree, agree with Bill that these other the shorter run agendas are a means to engage in people on a sufficient scale that you might even consider having the kind of social force you can achieve that change. You know, I think we've seen <coughs> in the election the phenomenon of the far right rising or the far left rising. Uh, the far left are not revolutionary parties at the moment, they're reform reformist parties. That space is there, but we need to seize it, and you seize it by meeting people or showing people that their more immediate issues can be met. Okay, we've come to the final short.